Grids? Grids? We don't need those stinking grids! I don't care if they're one of the hallmarks of tactical RPGs. Warhammer players don't have to deal with grids. They've got tape measures and AOE discs and smell like paint. But they don't have to deal with grids. Neither do we. We can break free from the tyranny of straight lines. All we need is the complete emotional destruction of a 13-year-old girl. You have been given the power to communicate with spirits and ask for their help in taking odd jobs to prevent foreclosure on your island. Normally, that's not the kind of thing a 13-year-old girl has to worry about, but it is when your parents are dead. Anyway, after enlisting the help of some friendly ghosts, you go about your business, tether these phantoms to objects littering the play area, engage in combat, do the job all with a smile on your face, and then you get screwed over by everyone, even little kids, because you're evil. I know, I know, you're not really evil. You're a sweet girl, always the optimist. It's getting kind of sickening, really. Look, we've got grids to abolish, so will you just admit that your spirit is broken and that you're tired of people casting aspersions, paint, and hate mail your way? Wait, we don't actually have to destroy a girl's psyche to do with grids? All right, we've gone gridless. Phantom Brave takes space into its own hands with battlefields full of slopes, plateaus, rocks, plants, fish, pillars, trolleys, seeds. If it lights up when the cursor is on it, not only is it a potential anchor for a party member, it's also a weapon. Each phantom in your stable has a set number of turns to act in physical space. Once their time's up, they disappear, sometimes taking the object they were confined to along with them and adding it to your inventory. You can wield a vase, you can wield a starfish, you can wield the corpse of a foe, you can wield the body of a willing ally, and or any permutation of those. Every object has its own intrinsic attacks, which can key off of any stat and be combined with other weapons or characters to migrate those attacks or any other traits. Listen, this is only a five minute review, and if I were to get into the intricacies of the game's mechanics, like why titles are important and how dungeons work and why you need to stack all of this stuff on top of your house, I'd run out of time approximately 1% through. I'll leave it at this. It's not just the battlefields that are open. There are plenty of ways to work the system to combine the right sets of things in the right ways to blow parts of the game wide open. There's always such a scheme in an Epon Ichi tactical RPG. Half the fun is getting good at making it work, and half the fun is in finding the fights that expect you to have done so and are still a challenge. There's a fairly mild difficulty curve for the main storyline's 20 episodes, then an even more absurd challenge in the post-game content, including a few familiar faces, and tails, and wings. <laughs> Phantom Brave has seen a couple remakes, both on the Wii and the PSP. Some take issue with it because the wide open nature of the game can make for some frustrating difficulties and potential glitches, especially if the battlefield is particularly slick or bouncy and characters keep falling out of bounds. But that's just the nature of the game. It's about being able to get around these problems and still be able to catch two foes in that attack if you position it just right. It's about going through dungeon after dungeon and crafting better and better titles, even if it is... It's about building the one fish to rule them all and proceeding to bash Laharl's face in with it. The grids are gone, baby. We got a big world to play with. We only had to come dangerously close to destroying a young girl in order to do it. Run away! I can handle this!